So now we've created the live course. Let's talk about workshops. So workshops don't have to be a live event, right? A workshop can be something like this. You can do workshops via Zoom. You can do them Facebook Live, YouTube Live, etc. The thing with workshops, you can do them, like I said, uh, they can be done webinar, they can be self-study, it can be Facebook groups, could be emails, could be a Zoom meeting. One thing to bear in mind is you can't offer everything in one package. So what does that mean? Well, look at the NLP training. There's the practitioner and then there's the master practitioner. So when NLP first started, they did a 28-day training and tried to stuff everything inside it. Not everybody wants to do a 28-day training. So break it down into chunks, different price points as well. So those that just want to do practitioner or just want to do the introductory, that's okay. Those that want to do the advanced, that's okay. Because remember, you've got different types of clients and they're doing the training for different reasons. Also, your clients might prefer to start with a lower price product. So by doing courses or workshop, that can lead into other products or services. So let me give you an example of that. The whole NLP training, we'll say, is, a, is the entire course. But I can have a workshop just around motivation. Or I can have a workshop just around anchoring or just around building rapport so when i do the workshop the beauty of the workshops could be that i do them as a lost leader example what some people do is they do a one day free nlp training and that's just the introduction and then at that they might then want to upsell the full seven day practitioner training now, personally, I don't do a one-day live practitioner train or introduction. I do it through 20 online videos on the website. And there's a reason why I do it that way. Uh, anyway, but the workshop I can do like this, where it's a free workshop. Now, I'm not yet to sell you any other products or services. I'm doing this as a thank you, for, you know, and, and how can I help you to help you succeed and make more profits. But your workshop can therefore... You can do it for many different reasons, okay? It could be because you want to delight your clients. It could also be, like I said, leading on to other products or services. So let's say I did do a full course for entrepreneurs. I can have a mini course or, or, or so say a workshop, sorry, just around dealing with limiting beliefs. Or I can have a workshop just around bookkeeping. And that can lead on to the other products, i.e. a full course or one-to-one -one business coaching. Now, to get people onto your workshops, what you can do is offer them this irresistible bonus. Again, it depends for what purpose you're doing it, right? But if I want to get people to the workshop, what bonuses can I offer them? That's entirely up to you. I could give them eBooks. Uh, I could give them uh, a free online course. What do you guys think? What, what, what bonuses could you offer your clients to come to a workshop? If you don't like the idea of offering a discounted pricing, or you, maybe sometimes people think, oh, but a bonus, you know, a bonus is like a, uh, a convincer. Yeah, for some people, it will be like a convincer. But you want to make it almost as a no-brainer for them, right? Also think about how you can use it to entice them. So you're going to get this bonus if you do it within this time. People often use the early bird pricing. There's a bonus, as an example. Uh, a free product, yes. You know, free one-to-one -one coaching session. Could be a free book. Could be whatever it might be. Or refer a friend, you know. And then they get a bonus as well. Ask for testimonials. Remember, you want raving fans. So if you can use testimonials, what other people got from doing your workshop or your course or your coaching, that's going to help entice people to come and do your workshop then as well. On page 11, we've got some ideas there, right? What, what workshop would you like to have? 
Uh, how can you break your training or your coaching into mini workshops? Let's say you were doing a, a weight loss coaching program. You could have little mini workshops on juicing or let's say you were doing a juicing, uh, let's say you had a, a, a juicing course, you could break it into little workshops where maybe you have one specifically on how to grow microgreens and which ones work the best in which combination to make the smoothie that you want or the juice that you want and which juice is the one that's going to be the best for whatever particular ailment or is it weight loss or whatever it might be. Okay, so there, you can do this in pretty much any type of business. Now ask yourself, where and how would you deliver your, your workshops? It doesn't have to be live. It could be via Zoom. Think about this time period we're going through at the moment. Right? Many people can't, well, social distancing. So doing Zoom is a, is a wonderful way of doing that. What resources and skills do you need to be able to deliver your workshop? Actually, let me ask you that. What do you think you need that maybe you don't have at the moment to be able to deliver a workshop? Just type it in the chat box there. Maybe it's something you need to learn. Maybe it's something you need to let go of. Yeah, if it's fear, get rid of the negative emotion of fear. If it's beliefs, change the belief. Maybe you can achieve anything. Anything is possible once you've done it. Ask yourself again, how many participants do you need for your workshop? Why are you doing the workshop? And if you're doing because you need to make money from it, what's the venue charges if you are doing it at a venue? How many do you need to break even? What's the profit that you have to make? Otherwise, it's not worthwhile doing. Okay, so how much do you need to charge? What can you upsell from there? Like I said, if uh, somebody's doing the one-day introduction to NLP, they can upsell the NLP training, the practitioner training or the master practitioner training. Maybe the audience can't come and do the live seven-day practitioner training. Well, then I can downsell and I can say, okay, well, we've got the practitioner training as a as a uh, online training. What can I do as an order bump? So order bump at the bottom of page 11 there essentially is what else can I then offer them? You Okay, so if you're taking the, the practitioner training, would you like to spend an extra 20 pounds and then you get the online videos as well? By the way, while you're doing that, would you like to spend the extra 120 and get five coaching sessions or whatever the case might be, right? So you're essentially giving additional products and services as well. Like I said, the purpose of the workshops, once you've taken that intellectual property that you've created, you can break it down into smaller pieces, more manageable size, and you can utilize that to, like I said, to do your workshops to upsell clients, to keep your existing clients happy, uh, to be offering additional services. The world's your oyster. Yeah, does this make sense to you guys? So let's just talk about the one-to-one -one coaching, which to be fair is probably why most of us are on the call, right? That's what most of us are doing is one-to-one -one coaching. The question is, what do you want to be known for? What is your niche? Remember, not a wondering generality we want to be a meaningful specific so what do you want to be known for what do you love to do we want to meet match and solve an immediate and an urgent need for our client it should be a single clear and achievable goal that's going to affect a permanent transformation in their lives i said this doing prac as well we want to do transformational coaching, not transactional coaching. What gives you so much joy in your coaching that, you know what, you just float high for days? You know, what, what excites you as a coach? What one important change do you often help your clients with? What do you believe in passionately that fuels your reason for coaching? So you want to be congruent in your delivery, in your coaching. You want to be passionate about what it is that you're delivering. That's how you decide on your niche. 
when I first started coaching, you know, I was trying to coach everybody and anybody. And I think most new coaches do that. And it's okay as you start finding what is the area that sets you alight, the area that, that you really get passionate about. Because that's one of the ways people feed off of people. And if your clients can, can tell that you're really passionate about that area, well, you know, they're going to buy into your passion and they'll be wanting to work with you. So I asked you, have you created your signature program? And, you know, some of you have and some of you haven't. Remember, email me separately and I will uh, email you the signature program again if you haven't done it yet. But I highly recommend that you do because that's going to help you to, to become clear on your niche. You know, have you created all of your social media profiles, your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram? Now, of course, some are going to be better for different types of coaching. But, uh, you know, I would say that everybody should have a YouTube channel. Again, when you consider these things that you can do in your live training or your workshops, you could record those things and you can put that onto your YouTube. So every Friday, I do a, a masterclass, which is just a, a conversation. It's like a little mini mastermind, although it's not a mastermind per se, between myself and a number of business people here in the, the Northwest. And we just talk about different things. And we record that, and I just post it onto my YouTube channel. Some people will watch it, some people won't. But being able to, to give more resources, more information, uh, and that's also, it's another way of how people find you and they, they connect with you and they say, you know what, I really want to know more about this. I want to know more about your coaching. I mean, have you created your website yet? Remember, you can have the prettiest website, but if nobody can find you, it's worthless. So you've got to do SEO on it. I'm not, this is not a training about how to do websites or SEO, etc. Just specifically about getting more one-to-one -one clients. All of these things we're talking about today and tomorrow are all geared towards getting one-to-one -one clients. But people want to go and check you out. They want to see what is it that you offer. Do you have your packages on your website? Do you have packages at all? Do you have a free download to capture the email addresses? So again, I asked that earlier, do you do emails at the moment? And most of you said no. So I personally like to use Active Campaign. You don't have to. There's many different email platforms out there that you can use. I like Active Campaign because it connects and integrates very well with so many different platforms, with my Facebook, with my website. As soon as somebody signs up on my website, goes into my email list if I want to if I create a blog I can put it into my email boom and everybody gets it so getting that free download on your website so that people give you their email address that's almost that's like a little a little yes it's a little buy-in that they give they saying you know what yes I'll give you my email to get this thing they've made a little mini commitment and if you can get these little mini commitments all the time from your client, that's going to lead them to buying your money products. So therefore, you need your email delivery system, right? Have you marketed? Do you know where you market? How do you market? And do you track those results? Again, not every marketing is going to work, right? But what works for you? What doesn't? You've got to know. It doesn't help just throwing a load of marketing to the wall and hoping something sticks. Find out what works best for you. Track where your clients are coming from so that you can do more of that. Yeah, what questions do you guys have? Not so much of a question, more of a statement. It helps other people, depending on what their niches are. Because my own being around divorce and separation and family coaching from my own experience, um, one of the big things I, for, for my perspective of marketing and how to find my clients is I can't just go out and blanket email people and things like that of, are you going for divorce? So for me, the biggest thing was like it backwards and find out, figure out who are the sources that already have an active audience, who can go and do proactive marketing for me so I don't have to, um, which is obviously family lawyers, mediators, um, I've been partnered with quite a few um, 
uh, independent financial advisors, wealthers, etc., who specialise in helping divide their assets and things like that. So I went to sort of five or six and other streams of sources to basically be an outsource provider for them and then go to them with I went to them with my signature program but a week per each one of what the benefit is to them so it's saving I don't know dollars for example it saves them time emotionally hand holding their clients when they can't build them for that time so why not do yeah, totally. that time so- for my way so just looking at where your captive audience is who's already spent a fortune in time and money creating your target audience that you can tap into totally you've got to that's why i say you've got to understand or if you're doing marketing what's getting you results so that you can do more of that and it's not going to be the same place for everybody so probationary asked you know how do you grow your following on youtube and social media without being too pushy if you go and look uh, probationary on the website there is a ebook for youtube and for linkedin we have come pretty much to the top of the hour so i don't have too much time that i can actually go into that at the moment but there are different ways that you can do that right so first of all from a youtube point of view <laughs> well the first thing is you've got to create videos okay but create quality it doesn't just have a you know, if I'm going to do a video just to have a selfie, as an example, I'm, that's not going to be a worthwhile video, right? Give resources and give information that people can use. So for me personally, I use on my YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, again, if you don't follow me on YouTube, uh, go look into the email signature, the emails that I sent you, and you can actually so you'll see my email uh, uh, in my email signatures, my YouTube channel. Click on that and go subscribe to the channel. Every time I record something, whether it's this mastermind or, or it might be snippets of this even, I record it. I go put it onto the YouTube channel. Subscribers will see it if they like it. You know, they might share it with other people. Uh, I've got the, the uh, 20 introduction to NLP and coaching videos on there. I've got some, uh, all my online courses, we'll talk about some online courses tomorrow, but all my online courses, I have uh, introductions for those on, the, uh, on YouTube. So you can grow your channel in, in, in a number of different ways, right? This is not just for YouTube, like I said, for, for social media, it can be Facebook, etc. There's some ways now you can pay for it. There's many ways now you can do it for free, but that's a whole training in and of itself. It's not a two minute conversation okay so yesterday we kicked off and we said one of the first things we want to do is we want to create our ip our intellectual property whatever that might be and i use the example of creating a live training so actually creating a manual creating something that you want to be known for now that doesn't mean everybody wants to go and do live courses however i would suggest there's actually a huge opportunity Right. So even if you were a, and I think yesterday I gave you a couple of examples. If I was a a fitness coach, I might be doing a live training for some of my potential clients on how they can be doing exercise at home during this period. Okay. So that live training could actually be a live training even done through uh, something like the likes of this, right? Although that would probably fall more in the realm of a workshop than, a, than an actual course. But the point was that you want to create your intellectual property. And we said from that, we can go and do workshops. Of course, we're already doing one-to-one coaching. But now my question is to you, or should I say, let's look at doing group coaching. and. What do you think are some of the benefits of doing group coaching? More clients in one go? Yes, yeah. Reach a lot of audience, reaching more people. Sure. Okay. So the thing is, you already know how to do coaching. Right? You know how to do one-to-one coaching. So therefore, you actually already know how to do group coaching. It might sound strange. The, the point is, if you're coaching, coaching is coaching. All we're doing is we're changing our niche 
or how we actually delivering it. But the process of coaching remains the same. Of course, we said, yes, you can help more people. Group coaching is the easy way to get known and to build your email list and your clientele. So because you can, you can speak to more people, you can coach more people, you've also got potentially more happy clients, people that are going to refer to you, more people that are on your email list. And you may have heard this before, right? The money is in the list. So that's why, Claudia, and thank you for asking a question again earlier. What do you have where you're capturing clients' emails? And how are you staying in contact with them? So what's your email delivery platform? Okay, your money is in your list, your email list. Okay, it's a great and natural addition to your existing services. If you're already a coach, then adding group coaching is a total natural thing to do. And what it's going to do is going to multiply your clients and it's going to multiply your income stream for the same amount of time. So instead of me charging 200 pounds for the hour working with one client, I might charge 10 clients 50 pounds each. So they save, you know, they're only paying 25%. They're paying 50 pounds rather than 200. But I'm making 500 pounds for the same hour rather than 200 pounds. When, when we trade our time for money, now, typically, when, when we're selling hours for money, there's always only just a ceiling. So your ceiling, and it doesn't matter whether you're charging 10 pounds or 100 pounds or a million pounds, there's only so much time in the day. So you can only reach that ceiling. Now, if you're doing it for one-to-one -one clients, that's going to be your ceiling. Where if you're doing it for multiple people in group coaching, suddenly you've made that exponential. And so... It's still a ceiling because you're still trading time for money, but it's now a higher ceiling, if that makes sense. Okay, you can tailor your group to suit both your clients and suit yourself as well. So what works for you? How do you like to do your coaching? What works for the particular group? You know, how you might coach a group of ladies. Uh, I was actually I was speaking to a lady yesterday afternoon she does postnatal coaching. And, you know, sometimes ladies after they've had babies and that, you know, they might feel guilty for going back to work. You know, they, they're a terrible mother. How can they leave their mom, uh, sorry, leave their child home alone and, and, you know, go follow their career? So you can imagine there's probably a lot of ladies that might feel like that. So rather than just coaching one lady, she can actually bring a number of ladies into a group and coach them together. But how I coach a, lady, a group of ladies like that and how I coach a group of people that want to learn how to improve their golf swing is going to be totally different, right? Groups create community and bonding. So the people that are in the groups, they can actually learn to help and support each other as well. And as I said, you want to build raving fans. So remember, you might have suspects people who don't know that they need you. Prospects, people that think, okay, yeah, they might do need a coach and they might even find out about you specifically. Then you have the clients where they actually buy from you. But what you really want to work towards is your raving fans. So people that go, you know what, you are the best thing since sliced bread and they're going to refer you to everybody else. That's the best type of client. Group interaction also accelerates learning and stimulates excitement. People start to learn from each other. One person might pick up a particular piece of information and start running with it, and then they start sharing it with other people as well, you know, with the other people within the group. Now, that might happen during the group. It might also happen outside of the group. Maybe it's a Facebook group that they have specific uh, availability to outside of your actual coaching. So as I said, group interaction teaches people how to be supportive and respective of, uh, respectful of each other as well. Now, group coaching can be your only coaching method or you can add it as an extra service. It's also the perfect entry point or exit point 
for different types of clients. So some clients, they may not be able to afford your one-to-one -one coaching, right? Or they might not be sure that it's right for them. So bringing them into a group coaching, which is going to cost less, and they also might feel a bit more secure within the group, great entry point. For other people, it might be a great exit point. So they've had one-to-one -one coaching, but now they want to be in a group so that they can learn and actually start implementing within this group environment whatever the, the learnings were and you know, their awakenings during the actual coaching that they had with you on a one-to-one. So there's actually loads of this different reasons why uh, coaching and, and group coaching is such a wonderful thing, right? Group coaching can also lead to new products. So here you are, you're busy coaching your clients in this group coaching format, and they say, but none of them know to how to do X. So as an example, Claudia, you asked, you know, what is the, uh, the free downloadable thing? Now, let's say that nobody in this group knew what I meant by that, or nobody knew how to use a email campaign software, right? Then I could create a workshop just around that. So suddenly it becomes a new pr uh, product based on your real-time feedback. Does that make sense to everybody? So the question is, why don't you offer group coaching? You just might, might not have thought about it up until now, right? But sometimes it can just be limiting beliefs. Sometimes it's things like, I can't do it. Yeah. Or I'm not ready to do it. Who might have a limiting belief about being able to do group coaching? Sandra, maybe, okay. Michelle, for sure. Okay. Well, I'm doing, working with a coach to remove it, Britain. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, guys, if you're doing, like I said, if you're doing one-to-one -one coaching, you can do group coaching as well. One of the first coaching, I actually was doing uh, management development coaching for a university. That was actually my first experience of doing group coaching. So when this university contacted me and said, can you do coaching for this management development? Uh, so it was actually part of a degree. And, uh, the first thing I said was, yes. Yeah, I think it was uh, Richard Branson that says, when somebody offers you an opportunity, the first thing you do is you say yes, and then you figure it out afterwards. Get rid of your limiting beliefs. You know how to get rid of limiting beliefs. And you know, the rest we just learn. Anything is easy once you know how to do it. And the thing is, if it rings true that we don't know what we don't know, well, then you might also just not know how simple it is to group, do group coaching and how rewarding it can be, especially if you're helping a number of people at the same time. Okay. Uh, Adeline, how are the two similar? Well, they're similar from the point of view as you're coaching, right? You're not there necessarily to actually be telling your people what they need to do. Now, there might be a slight element where you're delivering some content, but then you're coaching each person within the group and it's going to depend on the type of group that you're coaching as well is it within an organization so it's specifically a group of people within one company or is it going to be a group that's made up of the wider public you use the ladies again that might have uh, you know fe feeling guilt for going back to work so you might coach those people differently okay how does it differ from one-to-one -one? Uh, as I said, you know, you are, because you're working with a number of different people, one of the things that you'll get is you start getting people interacting with each other and they'll start giving advice to each other and they'll start be bouncing ideas, see what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. It takes a lot of the work out for you actually in, to one extent as well. Uh, how do you advertise for group coaching the most effective way? Michelle, that's going to be you know, pretty much the same as what you're going to be doing other uh, individual coaching as well. You just need to find the audience that you want to be serving. Again, if we just stick with the ladies that, uh, that might have this, uh, this guilt, look for where would ladies that just had children and now they might be thinking of going back to work, where might I find those types of ladies? 
There might be Facebook groups. There might be forums that you can check out. There might be uh, postnatal clinics. It might be advertising that I do at doctor's offices or something like that. Okay, so find out where your audience is going to be, which to be fair is the same for most other uh, coaching and that as well. Okay. I think one of the first mistakes is that is not taking time to define what your group's purpose. Okay. So what is the outcome? Why am I adding group coaching? So wh why do you want to do group coaching? Okay. What are the top three reasons that you're going to do the group coaching? What's the most urgent reason for doing so? And Hey, let's be blunt. Maybe it's just purely money. Yeah, maybe it's about wanting to have more clients, make more money. That's okay. Be clear about it. Just understand what is your purpose. Okay, so how's the group coaching going to help your ideal clients? What will it help them to do? What are they going to walk away with? Or in the case of the ladies with the guilt, hopefully walk away with no guilt, right? So, uh, What's it going to help? What problem is going to help them to solve? What model is going to work best for you? And here, I don't necessarily mean a model like the grow model or the results model. You can have different types of models, right? So as an example, you might say uh, one model, you start with a free webinar that gets people to sign up for your free six-week challenge. Or you might have offer for three months of straight group coaching okay so that's great if you already have coaching content or maybe you have worksheets let's say i was doing a coaching specifically for coaches to create your signature program yeah that that might be an example or maybe you want to coach people towards achieving a specific outcome right maybe i'm coaching people how to write a book there's a very specific outcome Okay, or how to lose weight in the next 30 or 60 days if you were a, a weight loss coach, right? So that's what I mean by model. What will your pricing be for your group coaching compared to your one-to-one? -one? So example, 200 pounds for the hourly rate for one-to-one -one or 50, uh, 50 pounds for group coaching. Then I've got to ask myself, okay, well, probably how much do I want to earn and how many clients am I going to need to make that work, right? Uh, what resources do you need to launch your first group? That's going to depend on the type of group that you're having. But are you going to give them worksheets? What type of exercises are you going to do? In this case, you know, if you think about your workbook for this course that we're doing over these two days, right? So what resources? Make sure that you have those done. What fears and objections do you have? So that's for yourself. Yeah. What fears do you have? Let go of them. You know how to do it. How is your long-term group coaching plan? Do you have a long-term group coaching plan? Meaning, do you have any plans to offer group coaching within your service deliverables? Right? Is it something that you're considering? Or if you are, what's holding you back? If you're not, again, what's holding you back? So how much do you need to charge? T touched on that already. How many participants do you need? So it doesn't help if I'm charging 200 pounds for the hour for one-to-one -one, and I'm charging 50 pounds for the group coaching. If I only have three people in the group, I'm making less money than I do if I was coaching one-to-one, -one, right? And the other thing that's important to consider there is where are you doing the group coaching? Now, if I'm doing it through something like Zoom, then that's okay. There's very little overheads. But if I'm utilizing a, uh, let's say I'm, I'm at a hotel and the hotel is charging me 50 pounds for that hour, well, then I've got to make sure that that falls in line. And also consider obviously coffees and, and things like that. So as I said, research the different models and ask yourself what's going to work best for you. Uh, is there a better one? Now, what are the advantages of following the particular model that you're going to use? So am I going to do a free one? Am I going to do one that is uh, specifically just 
coaching around a particular outcome that they want to have? Is it coaching towards weight loss? What is it? Okay, so what are you going to follow? How's it going to work? Is it best for you? Is it best for your clients? Okay, and is it going to further your group coaching goals? So if I can deliver effective group coaching, then in my next group, there might be one or two people that want to join the next group. They might have referrals that would like to join the next group. And so suddenly, I mean, is it fair to say nobody's doing coaching because you want to be working 70 hours a week for minimum wage? Can anybody tell me if I'm wrong? Is if I can have a group maybe on a Monday night and then I can have another group on a Tuesday, another one on a Wednesday. Maybe I even have five groups for the week, five different groups. But in each group, I have 10 people. So I've only worked five hours and yet I've also helped 50 different people, which is a hell of a lot better than working those 50 hours per week. Who would agree that that's probably a better model? What is your reasons, right? Why do you want to do group coaching? Yeah, maybe you have a mission to help more people. Maybe you have burnout from only doing one-to-one -one coaching. So that's an example where maybe, you know, you are coaching 30, 40 people in a week. And that's certainly not something I'm signing up for. That, that's, that's crazy talk. You know, that's going to burn you out. If you've done a lot of coaching and a lot of therapy work, you'll notice that it, it's draining. It takes a lot out of you. So I'd much rather help more people in, in less time. Maybe your clients are asking for groups. So they might actually say, don't you have something that's cheaper? Or don't you have something where I can work with other people as well? So, so it's peer support. So do you want to give your clients with financial constraints an affordable option? Do you want to make more income in less time? You know, or maybe are you too much in demand and not enough time? I mean, that's a nice problem to have, right? Knowing your own needs to help will help you to decide if your group coaching is actually worthwhile because it's got to sit with you as well. We're not doing stuff just for money. At the end of the day, money is a means to an end. Yes, uh, Jim Rowan said money is not the most important thing in the world, but it ranks up there with oxygen. So it's really important, but how much money you make, if you're unhappy doing what you're doing, and all the money in the world is not going to be a long-term solution. So you've got to make sure that it fills, it fills your cup as well. Okay. Like I said, it can also help you clearly define your format, your pricing, and other areas of planning. So what else might I be doing from this? So remember, why are we talking about all of these things in this workshop? We're talking at the end of the day of increasing visibility and increasing profitability. So if I've got more people on my group coaching, I've got more potential raving fans, I've got more people that I can market to, I've got more people that are going to be able to give referrals. Okay. So why are you doing it? And become clear of those reasons for yourself. Uh, sorry, Ben, can I ask a question, please? Sure, what's it? Uh, I just wanted to know what is the ideal price ratio for... A, for the group coaching is there any uh, ideal or for example no, you've ratio? got to decide that for yourself right because it's also going to be in the type of clients that you're going to be dealing with also how are you going to deliver and what are you delivering during that coaching okay if you're doing group coaching for business owners of how to go from uh, six figures to seven figures a year well you can probably charge a lot more than if you're going to coach children on how they should pass their final year at school. Okay. What about prices during COVID and people not receiving as much income as before? You know, Michelle, that's going to depend, right? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can do for free. There's a lot of stuff you can do for, for less, but I think at the end of the day, you've got to consider what pond you're fishing in as well. Don't let COVID become a limiting belief that, oh, nobody has got any money and suddenly 
you can't make any money. A lot of people start getting limiting beliefs and, you know, they think, oh no, the world is going to end. And yeah, okay, we're in a tough time. Uh, is it going to be tough when we get out the other side? Absolutely. But is there a huge opportunity be, to be helping people? Totally. So it's just about fishing in the right pond. And not every client is going to be your client. And that's okay. But that's also why we're looking at all these different ways of how you can increase your income. Is it one-to-one? -one? Is it group? Is it online courses? Is it live courses? Is it masterminds? Right? Etc. Okay. So mistake number two, not steering your ship. So this all starts right at your introduction, right? Your first session, help people understand who can they contact for support and how do they do so? Okay, because just because you're doing the group coaching doesn't mean that you may necessarily be the person who's going to be looking after your group the rest of the week, right? Or the rest of the month. And if you're offering group coaching, you might then probably not be doing a lot of one-to-one -one work with them as well. Because if you've got, let's say you've got these uh, 50 people in five groups and you've got 50 people, suddenly they want to contact you outside of your group coaching sessions. Well, you just don't have the time to work with all of those people in that way. Okay, so you're going to signpost them. You want to make it clear what's permitted, what's absolutely not tolerated. You want to talk about confidentiality policies, right? What can be shared? What won't be shared? Talk about cancellation and refund policies if uh, you had such. Payments if you were offering those. Ground rules for in-session communication. Okay, so example, one person is speaking. Please be quiet and allow them to finish speaking before you ask any other questions rather than, uh, you know, interrupting each other how often will you interact with them and how will you interact with them so as an example you might have a private facebook group so you're doing the the group coaching for them their hour on a monday night but they've got this private facebook group where they can interact with each other or they can ask questions and then you might spend a little time each day just on the actual facebook group and doing, you know, some uh, answering some questions for them. Because then you can answer the one question so that everybody learns from it rather than having to answer the same question 50 times. Watch for overwhelm. Okay, so don't overwhelm them. Just give them the most important highlights and then tell them where to find the finicky stuff. All right, do you have a handbook or do you have terms and conditions, frequently asked questions, etc.? Mistake number three is not beta testing. The Wright brothers didn't build a, uh, a Boeing on the first time, right? And they didn't fly the perfect airplane the first time either. Or they didn't go jump off the highest cliff the first time either. So we want a beta test. Beta test your webinar technology if you're doing stuff through webinars. Do recordings. Are you recording the sessions? If, if it's a live session, have you got a video recorder? If you were using a DLSR camera, know that you can only record for 30 minutes, right? So how would you be breaking up that time so that every 30 minutes you can go press record on your camera again? If you're doing online stuff, is the recording working? Check your platform software if you're using that. So... This, as an example, the other day, before we actually started this, I think it was last week, Friday, I connected with a couple of other people, and I was just running through this software uh, using Zoom just to make sure that everything was actually running smoothly and that you know, we could deliver this for you in the best way possible. But understand, you're going to beta test and you're going to do whatever, and you can still have hiccups, and that's okay, right? Again, don't be too hard on yourself. Understand that sometimes things happen, and that's the beauty of learning, right? Next time you know better. Be to test your scripts. Are you giving client scripts? Do the scripts work? Yeah, as an example, I'll just say, look at one of your scripts within the NLP manual. 
Okay? Does the script work? Does it read in the right way? If you're using plugins, uh, so plugins are things that you can have on your website as an example. I might use a plugin specifically for a calendar. So everybody that is on the webinar or on the group coaching, they can access a, let's say I gave them a free coaching session as an added bonus. Then they can access the calendar through my website and that calendar would be a plugin. Okay. It's just something that it doesn't have to be a calendar. It could be whatever plugin it might be, but I want to beta test to make sure that's actually working. Check any downloads. If you are giving them things to downloads, are those working? Are the links correct? Website sections, it kind of moves on from plugins. Tutorials. Okay, other resources. Anything that you're going to be giving and making available. Beta test it. Make sure that it's right. Make sure it works. It reads right, etc. Scheduling software. Cloud storage and retrieval. Let's say I was doing recordings or anything else for that matter, and I was making it available on the cloud. Are they able to get to it? Do they have the authority to get to it? Do they need specific login details? Does each person need their own login details? If I'm doing recording it and it's even if they're not allowed to have it, if it's purely recording that I'm going to utilize later, uh, is it actually recording? Okay, check all of your equipment, things like video lighting, microphones, recording, etc. Yeah. And if all that makes you break out in a cold sweat, hire somebody to help you. It's actually not that difficult. But if you need help with it, then get somebody who's going to be able to help you. There's a lot of websites like Fiverr.com. There's, there's a number of others uh, where you can get people to... Again, depending on what you need, right? They might create certain downloads for you. They might uh, set up the cloud recording software and so forth, right? Or you might have a virtual assistant or a PA that's going to help you to, to do all of these things. Think of somebody like Tony Robbins as an example. Yeah, he, he pretty much just pitches up and he does his delivery and off he goes again, right? So he's got a event manager that's going to run everything else for him. Maybe you want to have that, have an event manager and you just pitch up. Okay, so it all depends on what it is that you're delivering. Like I said, test everything. Is anything missing? Do people understand the various content components? So here's one of the things. If you're going to be, uh, be doing that, invite a small group of people. So if you're doing your beta testing, invite a small group of people who you think might be interested in what you want to deliver. But they've got to be totally interested. They've not got to be wishy-washy. If they're going to be doing this as a beta test for you, they've got to have full commitment and buy-in. Probably people that you know well. So here's an example for you. Uh, doing this workshop, right? I invited all of you because I trust that you'll give me feedback afterwards. And the feedback, it's, you know, you want honest opinions you want honest feedback so everybody wants to be up because everybody wants to learn how to make more profits nobody was coaxed to be here you came here because you wanted to be here and that's essentially the way and how you would do your beta test okay so have them have your first group or first couple of groups let them do it for free let them go through the process you can iron out any uh, things that maybe don't work all that well so encourage them to voice their opinions, give feedback, questions, observations. Some of the things just to watch out for, they're going to give you feedback, you know, on areas of your program that maybe is confusing or difficult to navigate. You know, when we write a program in our head, it might make sense, but actually the person that receives it, you know, that hears it, maybe it doesn't make that much sense to them. I, I think all of this makes sense, but I might say it in a way where you go, hold on, hold on, what does that actually mean? Your beta testers will, will highlight that for you. They'll tell you what they want more of or what they agree on or what they disagree on. Yeah? 
maybe they say, hey, you know what? You spoke about this particular thing and this didn't actually work. It didn't add value to the program that, we, that we're in. Okay, they'll tell you what content formats work very well. Maybe you have certain elements which are going to be PowerPoint. Maybe you're going to have some which are just PDFs that you hand out. Maybe some elements are going to be videos that they're able to watch. Okay, so what works best? And what didn't work for them at all? Maybe they found it boring. Maybe they couldn't read it. Again, that might be PDFs that you gave them, but they were written in yellow on white, as an example, and they couldn't really read what the PDF said. Okay, so what worked, what didn't work. Also notice what stimulates this fierce focused discussion. What is it that, that gets them to, gets them fired up? And that can be good or bad, right? But what gets them fired up? Maybe that's something you want to do more of within your program. Maybe it's something that you want to take out of. Okay, what do they agree and disagree on? What do they question the most? That might be they don't believe it. It might be that they don't understand it. Okay. They might also show you what are some of your incorrect assumptions or some of your blind spots. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Maybe you use a word like resources. You say, you know what, you come and do this workshop and I'm going to give you all these different resources. And uh, for you, resources simply means a list of other workshops that they can go and watch or that they can have access to. But for them, the term resources might mean something like worksheets and templates. And so there's a disconnect between what you said they were going to get. You, you use the right word, but your interpretation of it and their interpretation of it. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. So mistake number four is the four P's. Planning, promotion, pacing, and participation. We should always plan. We always have a plan of action. What's going to be your format? As we said, what's going to be your model? How long is the coach going to be? What's, is there going to be goal setting involved? What's the delivery systems? How are you going to promote? Okay. What's your budget? Maybe you've got a budget for advertising. Maybe you've got a budget for the room hire. What's the pricing structures? Content creation. Who's going to create the content? Do you have to buy in some content? Are you buying ready-made content? Uh, the schedules, when's it going to happen? When is what going to happen? Have you got any upsells? Remember again, why are we doing this? Because we want to be able to create more clients. So maybe I bring in these ladies that have guilt to go back to work. I do group coaching for them, but I have an upsell to work with me one-to-one -to, -one to specifically deal with the emotion of guilt and specifically set a goal of how to get their child at the age of five to read a book a day, right? whatever it might be. But that's going to be your upsell, right? What are you selling over and above that? Also, what some of the exit strategies? You, know, you might have some people that cancel, that don't want to be in the, the group anymore. You might have some people, and kind of, I say the graduate, that's going to depend. Have you got a group coaching program that's continuous? Or have you got a group coaching program that's going to be finite? And so after six weeks or three months or whatever it means, they then graduate, they finish with that. What happens then? Okay. Is there anything that, is there a next step? Any of your call to actions? If you don't have planning, then you have vagueness. Okay, so example, if it's open-ended, meaning your, your, your coaching program is open-ended, I think most of them really should be finite. So is it four to six weeks or is it three to six months or whatever it might be? So they know exactly what they are getting and the process to be able to get from A to B, what's going to happen in between, what's it going to cost them, what are they going to leave with? Yebo, yeah, let's see yep. who yet today is from our, uh, 
our UK groups. Yeah, yeah, one boy. Eh? Who is that? Adlin. <laughs> For the people in South Africa, me too. Uh, when, when I say yeah, boy, yeah, in the UK or in Amsterdam or whatever, people go, what? Why? What's this yeah, boy thing you're saying all the time? <laughs> okay. Planning is going to make all the difference in your success. Okay, so don't neglect it. Now you also got to do promotion. You could promote yourself or you can look for prominent professionals and you can do some joint venture partners. Okay, some JV. You might have heard the term JV partnerships. So you can promote your own program or you go on somebody else's site or you might do a, uh, a webinar in conjunction with somebody else and they they letting their list of people know that you coming to do this talk and what that's going to help is for one that's going to help grow your list because for them to find out more information they've got to go to your website for your download so you capture their email addresses that's a great way to grow your email list uh, also if the joint venture partner sells some of your and you know promotes and sells some of your workshops then they're going to get a certain percentage so you want to make sure if you do have jv partners if they take a percentage how much money are you left with and then is it still worth your while to actually run the course or the the workshop or whatever it might be that you're doing okay you might have a pre-launch so maybe that's four five six emails and so you are emailing your list of people who signed up for your lead magnet okay so is anybody here know, not, not know what a lead magnet is? Hey, okay. I don't. Okay. So think of a lead magnet. Uh, you've been on Facebook. And on Facebook, all of a sudden, there's this advert that says, you know, maybe it's somebody on a video, and they're going to tell you how awesome this wonderful new program is. But you know what? You can actually get a free introduction. You can get this free ebook. You can, and all you got to do is you click on the link and you enter in your email address. Yeah, you guys have seen that before, right? That's a lead magnet. Essentially, you are magnetizing, for lack of a better word, you are attracting your leads by giving them something and they then going to give you their email address. Now, that can be done through landing pages, webinars, podcasts, ebook bonuses, etc. So exactly that thing that I showed in the beginning of this session um, to Claudia, where you go and you click on my website and it says, well, enter your details and you get the free ebook. That's an example of a lead magnet. So you could have a Facebook group for those people who sign up for your pre-launch period, or you know, your free ebook or your webinar or whatever. And, and almost you want to have this feel like a reward for them. Some of you would already be, uh, you know, like the Facebook page, Coaching with NLP. But that's open to anybody, right? Anybody can go and like that and everybody can, can see some of the information that's there. But the Facebook group, and if you haven't yet, uh, like I said, I mentioned it yesterday, please go and like the Coaching with NLP Facebook group. It's a closed group just for coaches and therapists. Okay? So Jack Public doesn't know what's going on inside there right it's just for coaches and therapists so we might share information you know new resources something that's come up a new model etc now when you're doing that for people that are potentially coming to your workshop etc you you're giving them or, or like i said we're talking about the uh, the group coaching right you might have a closed facebook group just for people that have gone through your particular group coaching. So those ladies feeling guilty about going back to work, you might have a group just for ladies go feeling guilty going back to work. And so the content that's shared in there, stuff how they can talk to each other and bounce ideas and, and content that's going to help them. And that's, like I said, feels like a reward to them because they're getting this unique opportunity to communicate with other people that are in the same boat. You could do Facebook advertising and posts. You know, see which of your posts actually do the best for you and then at the very least boost them. Now, I'm not going to give you uh, any suggestions on Facebook advertising. 
Is there any particular lead magnet that you found useful promotional? Okay, so it's going to depend on you, your type of client, and the type of product that you're selling at the end of the day. I use on my website the free ebook. I've got another free seven, uh, seven Keys to Achieving Success mini course, which is an email series. I can take those and I can put them on my Facebook. So I have actually done that on Facebook previously. And uh, I also did it previously for the online goal setting course. So I might say, okay, uh, let's say it was New Year's Day, right? Or, or coming up to New Year's. And I say, uh, maybe there's a video and I say, you know, so many people set these New Year's resolutions, but by the 20th of January, most people have already dropped out of them. You know, news resolutions for, the, for most people don't work. But I've got this free ebook to give you, which is going to help you to become a little bit clearer about your goals and to be clear on why you want to have these new year's resolutions. So now they download that, that's free. So that's the lead magnet. And then my follow up from that might be because I want to sell them the online goal setting course. And so that would be the upsell. Does that answer your question, Prabhashni? Good. Okay. Uh, you might have a series of tweets. So again, it's going to depend probably on the type of client. Which types of clients do you want to attract? Who's your fo who follows you? How many people have you got following you, etc.? Okay, I think social media is great. Not every piece of social media is going to work for every type of course or thing that you want to launch. Right? You've got to have the right types of people following you. In fact, I was just watching something earlier this morning. Uh, and this guy actually said he'd much rather have 50,000 people, new people on his email list than have a million people following him on social media because it's so easy just to click like or tweet or you know retweet or whatever it might be. And people very, very rarely or very few people actually see those posts you know, because we're bombarded by so many posts. If you are going to do them, you could even get a copywriter to produce those for you. Again, something like uh, Fiverr.com, you could get somebody to, to write you some, uh, you know, whether that's your tweets or even your Facebook posts, right? You might have early bird or early action taker discounts. And this will also give you something that you can post or tweet about. So sign up early and you're going to get this as the added bonus or sign up early and you get a discounted rate. You can create some buzz. Talk about any guest speakers that you might have. So you asked earlier, Adlin, you know, how might it be similar or different from one-to-one from -one coaching? Within group coaching, I might have some guest speakers come along you know, or authors or whoever that might be. So he has another example of where it might be different. So if I do have that, and, you know, certainly, especially if those are people that are really well-known and they've got their own email lists, right? Talk about that. Tell, tell your audience who might be some of these guest speakers because that's going to create some buzz. And you might have some people just join your program because they want to have the opportunity to hear that speaker. Whoever watched the movie with Will Smith, uh, In Pursuit of Happiness, where he was, uh, you know, he was staying with his little son in the uh, very often at the toilets in the bar train station and then you know he became this well-known trader anybody watch that movie in pursuit of happiness and i had the opportunity to actually hear the real person so gardner actually speak and talk about his life as he went through that stage and so if i knew that somebody like that was going to be a guest speaker then that's going to entice me a lot more to buy into the program because there's so much more I can get from somebody like that. Follow? Yeah, boy. Again, you can drop hints, blog about the processes, invite questions, you know, etc. Inviting questions even beforehand, what that also allows you to do is do FAQs, right? Do frequently asked questions. You might shoot that as videos. You can use that as content. Advert put that through your social media and say, hey, you know what? We've got this new program coming up. And some of the people have asked, how can I really let go of the guilt so that I, you know, my child is only six months old and I really need to let go of the guilt so I can go back to work because 
we, we need two incomes in our household. And so many people have asked that. And that's one of the things we're going to be talking about during this group coaching program. And there you go. And it's given you the opportunity to create some buzz around your program that's coming up. Again, you might hold local workshops. Remember we said that the idea of all of these, they actually interact. So whether it's workshops, group coaching, one-to-one -one coaching, live trainings, webinars, et cetera, they can lead into each other. Okay, so you can hold workshops and webinars to promote your coaching programs. Get the email addresses. So if you're gonna do a workshop, get the email. I don't know if you've ever been to some of these workshops and they say to you, open your email if you're really interested to find out about this heavily discounted product when it becomes available. It's just another way of getting the email. Yeah. What else do you think you can do to promote your, your group coaching? But go and find your audience. So Michelle, when you asked, you know, where are you going to advertise? Yeah, word of mouth is a great way. Again, word of mouth, absolutely, Chloe, it's going to depend on your business. Think about where your ideal client hangs out. If it's the ladies that are feeling guilt and it's postnatal, then that's probably going to be a great place to be, right? So consider your audience and then consider how you can be in front of them. Years ago now, it might be probably about 15, 20 years ago, uh, there was a lady that was uh, struggling to get a particular appointment with this business owner and she actually sent him a bottle of wine and a loaf of bread. She'd been trying to get hold of him, but you know, the receptionist always just blew her out. And so she sent him a bottle of wine and a loaf of bread with a note that said, I don't want to whine, but I really think I can save you some dough. Let's set up a meeting. And he actually had a meeting with her because she thought outside the box, right? She did something totally different to be able to get an appointment with him. Yeah, vouchers, share snippets of your beta testing. Absolutely. Keep your, for, your program in the forefront of your audience's mind. Eh? So have your specific promotion plan available to you. Know what you're going to do when you're going to do it. Again, how many seats do you need to fill? And if I, if I know I'm only going to want 10 people, then, and I'm charging 50 pounds, so let's say I'm making 500 pounds, then I'm not going to promote and spend 1,000 pounds on my advertising. Keep your budget proportionate. So correct pacing is key to creating a successful group coaching program, right? So don't wing it. Understand exactly what's going to go on, right? Um, what's going to be the process? What, what questions are you going to ask? When are you going to ask? How much time is there for interaction? How, many time, how much time is there for, uh, for people to go on breaks? You know, make sure that you keep your pacing. In fact, yesterday when we looked at the live trainings, we said have an agenda. So create your agenda and your script for every session. You use it as a skeleton though, because every group is going to be different. Even the NLP trainings, there's the same content, but different groups ask different questions. Sometimes we need to spend a little bit more time, sometimes a little bit less time. So some common pacing issues might be how fast each person assimilates the information. So if they do it very quickly, you could potentially slow down a little bit. You could fill up some of the additional time. If people are assimilating very slowly, well, then you might have to think about how can I make sure that they actually understand what it is that we're delivering, right? So some of the time fillers, if people are getting it quite quick, use stories. You know, you could watch a case study. So use a video as an example. You can do more Q&A. You can do more exercises. So all of these are great to fill time. If people are struggling to assimilate the information, then ask yourself, does my workbook actually explain everything clearly enough? Have you missed anything to ensure that they understand? In the NLP training, we don't start with chaining anchors. We've got to start with how do we anchor, right? We've got to look at race and I turn 
before we even do stacking of anchors, collapsed anchors to chaining anchors. If we started with chaining anchors, most people would be blown out the water and wouldn't know how to actually do it. So is there a step that might be missing? Have I underestimated the time needed for the information? What can you do better? Now, I want to accept responsibility. Am I delivering it in the best way possible? Are they doing their homework? And if not, why not? And so if part of the program is them having to do certain things, if they don't do it, well, then that might have a, a, an impact, right? Am I boring them by drawing, you know, droning on in lecture mode? So we don't want to be speaking at our audience all the time. Have I built in enough interaction into the session? And maybe have I built in too much interaction? So if there's too much interaction, then what can happen is people's minds start to drift and wander and you know, lose the potency. Any questions up to now? Okay, participation. Clear guidelines from the start will let your participants know how much they can and can't participate, right? What, is, what are the rules? And don't let, maybe you've got this really over keen person and they cut out the less assertive people in the group. Maintain a kindly order. They help the people that may be less assertive. Maybe, the, maybe somebody's a little bit more introverted. They're waiting for the ideal opportunity to say something, but it just never comes because there's not enough time. So, if you have somebody that's boisterous and, and over keen, it might make some of the other people feel uncomfortable. Okay? So just kindly, in a kind manner, maintain order. Build trust by validating your group members' feelings. Okay, so acknowledge everybody and let them know that they've actually been heard. Plan questions for the group in advance. So if you've got questions for them, plan your questions in advance. Don't hope for inspiration just in the moment. Okay, it's just like that. Don't wing it. Be clear on what you want to achieve. And also, if you're going to ask questions that are going to help them become clearer about the actual content, right? asking the right question, asking a powerful question, a question that's going to make them think rather than just yes, no's. So ask questions that are going to challenge them. Ask them ones that no one has actually asked them before. Ask them is going to evoke discovery and that are transformative, right? So again, powerful questions, maybe questions other people are normally too afraid to ask. And sometimes that might be shock and awe as well. Ask questions that go, what, what, what? You didn't just say that, did you? Yeah, ask them questions that are going to challenge them. Remember why you're asking the question though as well, eh? It's to get you a particular outcome. Use other aids to further participation. So whether that's worksheets, let's say you give them a worksheet that's going to offer some intrinsic reward on completion. So if you follow, it's, it's like doing maybe smart goals, right? Imagine you've got your, your group coaching clients there and you give them a sheet that says, fill in your smart goal. And you give a, a short description on what each of those means. By the time they've completed the smart goal, ah, now they've got the entire goal written down nicely for them. Another example of that would be the create your signature program. If you fill in the blocks as they should be, you've created your program. On the website under the blog, I, I've got one for how to create your elevator pitch. All you've got to do is simply just follow that. If you fill in each of the blocks, you've created your elevator pitch for networking. Okay, mistake number five is not starting. We've got to start. If we don't start, we're obviously never going to hit the finish line, right? So just imagine for a moment, guys, just, you know, just for a moment, you might even want to close your eyes, but just imagine what would your life look like if you had profitable groups? What changes would you make in your lifestyle? Right, so you've got all the money coming in that you need. What changes would you make? What would you do with the extra hours when you can serve more people in less time? 
What would you do with that extra income? Would you maybe write a book that you've been meaning to write? Would you spend more time with friends and family? Would you be able to go to the kids' sports games? Maybe develop a new package to build on your packages. Take a spa day. Go to some event. Maybe you want to go overseas to an event, whether that's to Tony Robbins or Bruce Lipton. or Maybe take ballet classes. Who knows? What would you unlock for yourself if you just had these profitable groups? Who'd like to put in the chat box? You know, if you unlock this, this whole idea of group coaching, it's like getting that shot in the arm, right? Something that's going to, that can really boost your business. Sleep longer. <laughs> Just you, not me. Eh? <laughs> Write that long-awaited book. Yes. Yeah, who knows, right? But just to take that pressure off yourself. Not having to wonder, where's the next paycheck coming from, right? So what needs to happen for you to be able to take this massive, appropriate, consistent action? Who would like to commit to actually doing some group coaching. Not, with, not to me, I mean, and not with me. I mean, setting up your own group coaching program. Would like to commit to, to giving it a go. So what needs to happen for you to do that? You don't need to put that in right now because we need to carry on. But just think about that for yourself, right? Already have two coaching programs in mind. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, Sam, the key there is speed of implementation, right? You've got these ideas, go and make them work, go and do them. You'll never know if you don't give it a go. And remember, everything is just a learning opportunity. Eh? So there's some exercises there in your workbook, page 13 through to 16. Again, just follow those through. It's going to ask you some questions to help you become a little bit clearer.